Hey, what's going on guys? Mike from the Retro Lectors. And today we're gonna to be reviewing the Defender from Retro Fighters for PS3, PS4, and PC consoles. When it comes to the PlayStation, it is no secret that I do not like the controllers. Controllers have never been some of my favorite things to use at all. From the PS1 to the PS3 to even the PS4. Retro Fighters released its first version of the Defender for the PS1, PS2, PS3 consoles. And it was a very good controller. I really liked it, especially like I don't like the standard controllers that came with the PlayStation 1, 2, and 3s. I just didn't like the feeling. I more like the ergonomic design that the Defender first released for those three consoles. In this version of the Defender, we have it for the PS3 and PS4 PC consoles. The Defender Wireless Gamepad. Get ready to wrap your hands around a truly one-of-a-kind controller. Dust off your PlayStation 3 and get ready to experience your favorite games like never before. Make sure you grab the most comfortable seat in the house because with this wireless range of 30 plus feet and a battery life of 10 plus hours per charge, you'll be pulling all-nighters. The Defender is packed with all the features you expect from a next-gen video game controller. From its ergonomic shape and comfortable and responsive analog sticks to vibration feedback and turbo functionality, the Defender has got everything you want and nothing you don't. The Defender features Bluetooth wireless technology, compatible with PS3, PC, and PS4, pressure sensitive buttons, six axis functionality, comfortable and responsive analog sticks, vibration feedback, wireless range of up to 30 feet, LED indicator, and includes USB-C charge cable. Now I do most of my gaming on console whether it be the PS4 or the Xbox consoles. And the ease of use of this controller, just connecting through Bluetooth to the console is second to none. Turn on a console, turn on this controller and away you go. The overall design is a mirror image of the PS1 and PS2, PS3 Defender. It's exactly the same. They look very, very similar. There's some things I don't like about the Defender controller. One being the D-pad. I don't like the height of it. It feels a little bit low to the actual body of the controller. I feel if you're playing Street Fighter or any fighting game, you're very close to the actual controller base and doing a forward, down, down, forward motion. I feel like you're touching more than you're actually pulling off the move. Another thing I'm not too fond of is its overall weight. It's very, very light in comparison to a PS4 controller. It just feels a little bit on the cheap side, but it does fit your hands perfectly. So with a lightweight, but the fact that it fits your hands kind of counterbalances itself. A feel of a long game session, you won't hurt your hands, but if you drop your controller in a rage session, you're gonna actually smash this thing and probably break it. What I really do like about this controller are the actual analog sticks. They feel very good. I like the textured design that it has. I feel that some of the PlayStation controllers are missing that textured design. Xbox actually delivered that textured design on their controllers. And I really like that little touch. It feels that the actual analog sticks are sticking to my thumbs rather than sliding off like PS3 controllers, I, I find that my thumb would slide off a lot. I really do like the shoulder buttons. They're very responsive and they're very clicky. The back has a nice texture design that sits perfectly on your hands. It doesn't give it too much of a wiggle room when you're holding it for too long. It just sits nice and <laughs> snugly in your hands. Let's take it to a few games on the PlayStation 4 you can see how it responds. Using the controller has been a blast. I just find a little bit of a situation with the analog sticks. They are a little bit more sensitive than I'd like especially in a game like Call of Duty where precision is everything. And I have my sensitivity to a medium range and I use it with my PS4 controller and I have no issues with that. But with this, I find it's very sensitive for you know those very precise movements that you need in a controller. It does lack the rumble feature, but not for anything. I do choose to not have the rumble feature on unless the game really is heavily requiring a rumble feature to figure out certain hints of games or, or little things that you have to find on screen. But most of the time, if I'm playing a certain game and it's just basically just going off rumbling, I find that it's wasting the battery more than it actually should. And I normally turn it off anyways. Like I stated before, it does have six axis support, but I didn't get a chance to test that out. Comparing the two Retro Fighter Defender controllers, they're exactly the same. They're built the same. They have the same weight. But when you're putting it against a PS3 controller, the PS3 controller does have a little bit of a weight to it. The buttons, again, I'm not a big fan of the PS3 controller. I don't like the analog stick placement, even though they are side by side. I just don't like 
the dog nose protruding analog sticks. I like the basically concave analog sticks. I also like the longer grips on modern controllers. The PS3 find that their grips are very small and too tight for a controller. They did rectify that on the PS4 and the comparison between the Defender and the PS4, again, there is a weight feature mainly because of the rumble feature in the built into these controllers. I do like the PS4 controller, especially in comparison to the PS3, but as a nice replacement or as a secondary controller, the Defender does fit the bill in passing it on to a friend that you want to play two players and you want to spend $70, $80 here on a PS4 controller. You can get a nice Defender over here for about $40 shipped to you. And that's, that's a great deal in itself. Minus a few issues with the controller. I did have a good time using it. It does feel very good. The sensitivity does throw it off, but I'm sure in certain games, maybe a 3D platformer or something along the lines like an RPG where you don't need precision movement, you can get away with this. Retro Fighters has a really good knack of building controllers and this is no different. The Defender did hold up to the test that I did put it through and it does feel very good in the hands. It's ergonomic design, it's triggers, it's analog sticks, it's D-pad, again, few issues with the D-pad, but overall it was a very good controller for a secondary player. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments down below. Did you guys have a chance with the Defender controller, either on the PS1, PS2, PS3 version, or the PS3, PS4, PC version? Let me know in the comments down below. Please like, comment, subscribe. Thanks, guys.